recording. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone. Thank you very much for joining this inaugural uh, WDS webinar. Uh, we're sorry for starting a couple of minutes late, but we had some audio problems, but we have uh, now solved uh, the issues. So uh, this is, as I said, the inaugural WDS webinar, and we're very lucky to have uh, Fiona Murphy from Wiley um, to present today. Uh, Wiley is an associate member of uh, the ICSO World Data System, and she will be talking about uh, the prepared project and more generally about publishing research data. We hope um, this is going to be um, the first of a long series of WDS webinars. I hope you understand that this, uh, this is our first uh, experience with webinars and we hope to <laughs> have um, uh, you uh, bear with us in case of any, issue, any trouble or any issues we have during the, the webinar. Fiona will be presenting for um, about half an hour and um, we will run a short poll at the end of the presentation and after uh, viewing the results of the poll we will open the floor for um, discussions. So I will hand it over now to Fiona for her presentation. Are you ready Fiona? Yes, I am. Thank you Mustafa. Thank you. So, um, hello everyone. Um, as Mustafa says, I'm Fiona Murphy from Wiley and I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to, to talk to you today about publishing research data. Let's do it again. Here we are. Um, so the structure of my, my talk um, hopefully will be, be fairly logical. Um, I just want to um, just do a little bit of background about um, publishing research data and I think the, the people on this webinar um, are likely um, very well informed about um, various issues around it, about the size of the research data, um, you know, capacity, um, about why um, it might be a good idea to, to try and publish and to manage research data in a more meaningful way than has happened in the past. But um, just to make sure that we are all, um, I guess, on the same page at, at the beginning of this talk. Um, then I'd like to talk about um, the prepared project, which um, has recently um, closed, now is in the writing up process, which I was involved with, um, and some other issues around um, publishing research data, why we think it's, it's not yet um, been taken up you know, in, in, in MASH, as it were. Um, we'll then look at a couple of um, next steps and, and projects and movements which, which are taking off at the moment, and then hopefully um, we'll have the poll and a bit of discussion at the end. So, so first of all, around you know, the background of publishing data, um, from, my, from my point of view, I'd say it's analogous to, but not precisely the searching primary research. And that could be for sevens. It could be done by a different team member from, from usual, you know, diff a different um, set of people within the team actually being the authors. Um, it could happen part of the way through a project rather than after the end of the active research period. Um, I think most importantly, um, it doesn't need to be significant. Um, in terms of its, its impact or findings in order to be worth publishing. Um, if it's of sufficient quality, then that should, that should be enough to make data worth publishing. It should be um, permanently or at least long-term archived in a reliable repository. I put reliable in um, quote marks there because I think that, that in itself is, is another issue we're going to come on to. Um, and also allocated a, a persistent identifier um, from my point of view, as, as a publisher, a, a DOI um, feels like the most comfortable identifier to use, although um, I understand that not all data sets um, are deemed suitable for that. Um, and in the meantime, um, and, you know, even a URL could, um, could perhaps suffice um, in order, you know, as long as something there, there's something there to, to point to. Um, we also, I do, there will be a, a level of metadata to allow discoverability. Um, and that's not just the finding of the data set, it's also understanding what it is that, that you found once, um, once you're actually looking at it. And um, that, that hopefully that will give you an opportunity um, to reuse and, um, and also to do so within, within whatever licensing terms are, are required or appropriate. There could also, um, the publishing data, be, be a data paper or another primary research article 
which is specifically related to and, and cross-linked with the data set. So that's, that's I think, what, what we're looking at today. So to the prepare, um, peer review for publication and accreditation of research data in the Earth Sciences or Prepared Project. Um, I've just put a, a, a splash page there on it so that you can see the, the range of, of partners, um, who, which were data centers, um, you know, both in the UK and um, abroad. Um, we have this digital curation center from universities and then some commercial partners, Wiley and the Faculty of a Thousand. Um, although we specifically were looking at, at earth sciences, given that the majority of, of people um, in, the, in the project's main competencies, we, we also were very keen not to go down any subject-led silos um, in, in any of our recommendations or findings. So the Faculty of a Thousand was specifically invited in order to be able to give a, a life science and, and biomedical science angle. As I say, we're, we're currently in the writing up phase. Um, and I'd, I'd encourage anyone who's interested to, to Google prepared um, spelt wrong, as you can see, um, and have a look at our website. And, and um, you know, we're very welcome. We'd very much like to hear any comments or, or further um, points we could take into account. Um, our main work packages um, were around workflows, um, peer review, repository accreditation, and cross-linking. So the workflows. Um, we studied and then captures a variety of, or a range of, of data center and journal workflows in order to, to see how, how data are ingested and then published. Um, and we actually did find a great range um, of often very complex processes. Um, and in fact, um, a specific data center could itself have multiple workflows depending on the, the, the format of the data, um, the person that's, that's doing the, the depositing or inquiring around a data set. Um, and so it, it feels as though it's, it's, a, it's a very it's much a jungle of a landscape um, for people to, to have to try and negotiate. So in response to this, we came up with a, a generic data publication workflow. Um, so as you can see, we, what we tried to do is make very clear um, what responsibilities were, were had within, within which um, type of, of um, entity. So um, the data center's responsibilities here are in purple. And we've actually linked this particular um, publication of data with, with a data paper which, which relates to it and just cross-linked to it. You can see this is much more high, high level than the other workflows that I, I was showing you. Um, but what um, we thought was important was just to, just to be able to convey to people um, just what the actual main processes are and then they'll be able to then map that on to, to whatever um, real life experience they, they have and have an understanding of, of why something you know, might happen before something or have to relate to something. Um, and we do feel that this is something that, that um, will need you know, continue to continue study, but this, this felt like a, um, something useful that to, to engage people with and to, and to elicit more, more information. So peer review, um, if you're involved already with um, and directly with research publishing, you're likely aware that the review process is already under strain, as many journal editors have to make multiple requests um, for, for referees for particular papers. So it felt like a very critical part of, of the project to make some progress on. You know, what should peer review of data sets look like? Um, can it be standardized and, and how can it be made more you know, palatable or, or manageable by, by already overloaded um, communities? So our basic standing, standpoint or starting point was to um, set out some, some, some guidelines or you know, th this is what you should start off with, this is what you, sh you should have. So the data set it sh itself should have the permanent identifier and be held in a, in a trusted repository as you see that itself is another of our work packages. Um, there should be a landing page um, and or other file that now that, that contains the metadata allows you to determine if you've got the correct data set. And it should be accessible at very, the very least to the referees um, and if not um, accessible to more widely and um, it should be understood what the conditions are and, and it should make sense to the relevant community. So we also started breaking it down in more detail. So we thought of um, giving the, ref the reviewer um, a sort of a pragmatic practical checklist um, which actually separates out the questions they ask 
of particular um, parts of, of the data set or accompanying um, data um, descriptor. So um, as you can see, um, they, they start off looking at the description document. They're, they're asked to consider the method, the level of metadata, the how and the why um, the data set was, was collected. Um, is it reusable? Uh, what are the potential applications? Can it be cited? Um, similarly, the, the metadata, um, is it comprehensive? Uh, does it include ownership um, information? Are the acronyms explained and calibrations and, and other variables um, explained as well? Whereas um, the data, data set, um, were appropriate access terms given? Uh, is any software which is required um, either included or easily available? Uh, can the files be opened? Are they complete? Um, you know, is the format um, correct? Um, you know, are, the data, are the data error ranges or, or, or other parameters um, both sensible and, and described? So although there are quite a few questions here, I mean most of them shouldn't be too arduous, we felt, to um, a reasonably qualified reviewer for, for a specific um, community or, or subject. And we've also felt that with practice, um, a business as usual start um, and sort of workflow could be could be um, adopted and people will be able to actually automat you know, automatically themselves um, question a, a data set using using these sorts of questions. Um, we're actually in the process of putting together a white paper on this work and um, we're wanting to do some further study on it. So the accreditation. And again, we, we, we try to, to boil this down to, to some um, basic principles. Um, so the repository must be actively managed and ensure access to the data set um, and persistence for the data set as well as stability. Um, it should be possible to, to search and retrieve capabilities. Um, and it also should be possible, I hope no one can hear, there's a siren just gone past me out here. Um, it should also ideally be possible to collect metrics, um, at least about download and, and usage, um, but preferably um, around citation as well. So, so far, you feel so uncontroversial. Un However, we also found that this is a very contentious issue. Um, accreditation schemes, um, you know, reputable ones do exist, such as the data seal of approval, um, and also the trustworthy repositories audit and certification, or TRAC, um, but none so far um, prevails, and there hasn't been a, a critical mass of, of uptake um, to any one scheme. And we, um, we've, we've been um, pushing on this and trying to understand why that is. But uh, we haven't yet got a, a, a clear, ambiguous, unambiguous answer. Um, we wonder if some repositories feel there's no clear benefit to them, that potentially the, the, the process of accreditation is, is unclear, or it doesn't feel worth the, the effort. Um, or they just don't have the, the, the person power to, to be able to complete. Um, a lot of repositories, um, particularly if they're um, based at a particular institution, that's very research-led, um, or towards a, a particular discipline and has become very well known to the community it serves, they feel that their, their personal reputation, either, either to the, the um, data center itself or the people that run it, um, actually provides um, informal accreditation. But we do feel that this is going to change as well. Funders and policy makers um, who hold the raw purse strings are, are becoming um, more keen, I think, for this to, to become standardized and, and regulated. And, um, and so we, we also will be wanting to do some, some further work to identify the, the blockers and, and support um, a, a reasonable, do, you know, doable um, accreditation. So to the cross-linking, um, as you can see, in the prepared project itself, we worked with a specific journal, the Geoscience Data Journal, um, and we're looking at, at cross-linking data sets that are sitting in repositories to um, articles that are, that are sitting in the journal. And um, when you've got one journal and a couple of data centers, um, you, can, you can do it manually, you, you can do it bilaterally, it, it's, it's going to be a, a manageable process. But once you start trying to scale that up, um, thinking of, of all the data centers, repositories, and other, other places where, where data might, might lie, and all the journals and all the publishers um, and cross-linking that, that, that could well be required, you can see that it just simply um, isn't scalable. And what we felt was um, that 
there is a need for some sort of, of central registry um, which, which can not only to manage the relationships and the information feed between the um, journals and repositories um, and to each other, but could also potentially um, be that the point of, of accreditation, um, of collecting the metrics and, um, and spewing them out um, in order to, in order to um, allow um, a, more, a more regulated um, method to, um, and, and landscape to, to emerge. Um, as you can see, we did, reala we did realize there are some potential um, disadvantages, and I think um, we've put a few possibilities as well where this, this registry might, might develop from. We feel that it's, it's very important it's not only discipline agnostic, it also would need um, to be um, I think a not-for-profit, it would have to be um, not, you know, perhaps you know, it have representation from various key, key stakeholders, not be the, the property of, of just one say, the publishers or the data centers or universities or the funders. It had to be a combination of, of many key, key stakeholders. So <clears throat> we, we felt, though we, we, we made quite a bit of progress, we felt, in, in understanding and unpacking and making some recommendations around, around public and publishing data, um, there's still a lot of work to do around um, automating many of the systems and uh, the ways of gathering information. In fact, at the moment, because um, it's, it's not a well-trodden path, there's um, as quite a lot of rep you know, rep repeating um, of, of upload of, of information, um, and also you know, this core uh, registry for cross-linking, because um, we, we just don't feel that it's, it is a scalable um, activity until something like that has been, has been sorted out. Similarly, um, corrections to data after after data or a data paper have been published. I um, mean, obviously there are there are well understood methods for um, updating primary research papers, but um, that's very much happening in a minority of cases. Whereas um, I think we, we understand that um, with publishing a data set, there's more likely to be um, corrections or amendments, updates. Um, given, given the fact that it, it happens earlier in the process, um, it could be part of a, an ongoing observation, um, observation data set. Um, again, but there have to be some different rules and, and other standards that, that are put in place. More widely, um, we feel that there are, there are still um, other, other issues, other problems which is sitting in the way of, of mass uptake. Um, and a, a big one is cultural. Um, you know, people don't um, feel that, that sharing their data is, is going to um, benefit them um, and it's only going to benefit their, their potential competitors. Um, there isn't a, a, a well understood um, or well driven path for reward um, in terms either of, of grant funding or of, of um, promotion or prestige. Um, people um, aren't necessarily aware of how to do it and they're put off by, by arduous workloads. Um, and similarly, the business models, um, who pays? Um, and when in process does, does that payment happen? Um, is, it, is it for ingestion? Is it for long-term storage? Is it for viewing? Um, and, and again, the licensing and the, the ownership, um, what, you know, who, who does end up owning? Um, if you make certain changes, does that change anything about, about the ownership? I think a lot of this still needs to be um, worked through. But um, before we get too depressed, um, there are still um, some other um, places to turn to, and I think things are, are moving, getting off the ground. Um, as a result of, of the prepared work, we set up a data publishing list, which is ongoing and active, and which um, we're very happy for anyone who, who wants to, to join to either approach it directly or drop me a line. Um, there's a, a World Data System um, and Research Data Alliance Publishing Data Interest Group. I think the staff is going to um, say a few words about at, at the end of this. Um, I would also like to draw your attention to um, a cost EU um, group which is forming. Um, uh, Sarah Callahan, who's the project manager for Prepared, is, is gathering um, expressions of interest around um, a fun, uh, around a, a project which is provisionally called um, Publishing Academic and Research Data, um, and which would look at, at, at um, building network opportunities um, for interested people from across Europe and also external to Europe to, to meet and again further a number of these of these issues and try and progress them, um, and um, you know and come out at the end obviously with with um, more, more developed recommendations and and hopefully some some more buy-in from bigger groups. 
Um, again, if you're interested in, in hearing more about it or in joining them, please let me know um, either during this meeting or, or afterwards. You'll have my email address, I think, as a result of this, of this call. Um, finally, I also wanted to draw your attention to um, Thomson Reuters, you know, who publishes the I, um, ISI or Web of Science um, databases. And they've, they've just um, published a white paper called Unlocking the Value of Research Data, which um, is about eight pages long and I think gives a really good um, um, outline of, again, a number of, of the issues starting from uh, um, the, um, the ISI, the Thompson Viewpoint. And again, it, it, um, it, does, it doesn't say, this is what we do, it's all sorted out which they are progressing the, the debate, I think, and they're also, they're also questioning, um, you know, stakeholders you know, step up to the mark, you know, and, and start, start making some progress on this. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Fiona, for, uh, thank you, Fiona, for the present, this presentation. Um, I will just follow up on the point you raised about the WDS RDA Publishing Data Interest Group. So this is um, um, an activity uh, recently started in collaboration with the Research Data Alliance. Um, as most of you know, um, the World Data System and its predecessor bodies have been uh, actively promoting data publication for some time, with some of um, uh, our um, WDS members um, playing a lead role in, in the area. Um, as Fiona um, mentioned in her presentation, many of the aspects uh, need a lot of work uh, still to be done, um, especially in the cost models and uh, cost recovery area, in the bibliometrics, and, and also in this uh, uh, one-for-all publishing services that will uh, cross-link uh, publications and, and, and data, data sets. So in the context of this, um, data publication interest group, there is um, a strong will to coordinate different initiatives uh, addressing all these topics. Um, you, uh, you will probably hear uh, from uh, the findings of uh, the various working groups uh, addressing these topics. Fiona is a member of this interest group and uh, more specifically uh, she is involved in the workflows and in the bibliometrics uh, subgroups. Um, so, uh, please stay tuned with uh, the WDS uh, activities in this area and don't hesitate also to make contributions at the various venues. There will be an opportunity at the next Research Data Alliance plenary, which is taking place in, in Washington in a, in a week or so. Uh, and we will have also uh, other webinars organized to present the findings of these uh, various uh, subgroups uh, addressing data publication. Now we would like to run a brief poll, uh, so you're invited to uh, answer the question currently showing up on your screen. I hope everybody can see the question. I've got to, you've got to close the poll to enable screen sharing on my... It's oh. Up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. got it. Okay, so uh, please complete the, the question. Um, I have, um, meanwhile, a question, a written question as well. Um, yeah, about the IOD score cookbook. So this is, um, in fact, taken on board our uh, data publication working group. Um, we will take, uh, we will open the floor for uh, some questions, so uh, Linda, if you want to ask the question verbally, um, we will, I would be pleased to, to, to answer the question, uh, but you please know that the, the work of IOD score is fully integrated into, um, into the current work of um, the WDS Data Publication Working Group. We're still waiting for more votes to come in. We've, uh, we have 57% voters. Um, okay, we'll wait a little bit more. Uh, so, uh, we're 86% voted, almost 100%. I'll wait a little bit more. I'll give you 20 more seconds to 
answer this question. We hope that this will open maybe uh, further discussions and, and questions with, with, uh, with Fiona uh, around her presentation and the data publication. Okay, we have 100% votes, so let's have a look at the results. Okay, so the results show that um, in your opinion, the main uh, major obstacle um, is number one, absence of accreditation or reward, 43%, and second, reluctance to share data, 29%, followed um, equally by the lack of knowledge training and the cost involved. And nobody voted for the QA, QC review <laughs> issues. Uh, any reactions, Fiona? Um, I guess from my point of view, that, that feels logical. Um, and I think that, that um, people working in research are hopefully usually um, pretty clever, and they're not going to spend their, 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 their valuable and limited time doing things which, which aren't going to help, which aren't, you know, if, if, unless they, if they can't see a benefit. then. Mm -hmm then why would, they, why would they take it on? Um, I think it's interesting because we ran this poll earlier today and it was the reluctance to share data option which got the majority this morning. Absolutely. Um, that's, that's gone second this time. So um, I think, I think that, that is still quite a strong um, factor as well. I think there, there's, there's um, I, guess, I guess maybe this poll is saying that um, if, if you can put in place some kind of accreditation reward or reason why people could do it, then perhaps you can then go back and address the reluctance and you can, you, there will be some logic in, in what you would be saying to people at that point. Absolutely. As opposed okay. to now where it's like, it would just be nice, nice if you shared. Absolutely. Um, we would like to take some questions also from the audience, so if you have any questions you want to ask uh, verbally, uh, you can raise your hand using the GoToWebinar interface. I have a number of written questions here, but I don't know if you want to ask them yourself or if you want me to ask them. So if you would like to ask them yourself, please raise your hand and I will open your microphone so that you can interact directly uh, on, on, online. Okay, I have um, Root, Root Doer from uh, NSIDC who has a question. Hi Root, this is Mustafa. Hi Mustafa, hi Fiona. Hi. So my question is, this is about research data and data that could be um, actually referenced within a paper perhaps because a researcher is producing that data themselves. But there are other kinds of data that need to be referenced. Um, perhaps the users be using data from some major repository or something like that. And so I guess my question is, how do you see this extending to these other sorts of circumstances? Are you talking about a repository that isn't of, of the I guess, accredited kind that we were talking about? No. Is it less stable or? still an accredited repository, but it's not clear to me um, how some of the criteria and the things that you were talking about um, work when you're not dealing with a researcher's data, when you're dealing with data that's of more broad use. Uh, is that governmental data, for instance? Well, for example, it might or be health more data. Um, right. Um, well, I guess we have been you know, as, as, a, as a group dealing with, with research data, with like a small subset. Um, and um, I, I think there tends to be a distinction made between um, straight research data, if you like, and, and some bigger data. Um, so I think thinking on the fly, I would, it's, I think the big question would be to, to um, start having standards. I think if you can start um, extending an understanding of standards to, um, to non-specific you know, research data, then it should be possible 
to to site and to crosslink, um, it, you know, in in you know the way that we're talking about here, but that that would involve you know an extra step to to make to you know, to, to engage with that you know with the, with the people who are who are managing that kind of um, data as well. Do do you think that would make sense? Um, I think it needs some study um, because mm -hmm. it's not clear to me that, for example, all of the um, rules or criteria that you had um, are possibly the same. I mean, data reuse is, I think, uh, happening more commonly with um, what in the United States they call reference or community data sets. Um, and, and whatever systems are put in place need to work across that entire range of data. Mm. Yeah, well, I guess actually, I mean, there is another working group um, within the Research Data Alliance called um, Citing Data or Data Citation, isn't there, Mustafa? I guess it would be interesting to know um, how broad a range they're, they're looking at. Um, um, because so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a member of that group. Oh! <laughs> is, oh is that what it's coming from? Um, yes, yeah, so it, it, it feels as though. Um, the question should be asked whether citation works outside academic mm, circles. Yeah. Um, and if, if, it, if it does, then I, I guess we'd be able to, to look at, again, further upscaling. So yeah. they are considering data writ broadly, but mm. um, I don't think they've gotten anywhere near as far as, for example, you have gotten here. All right. Well, that's good because it, it always feels like, a, like a, uh, you're not getting very far. But, uh, that, that's good to know. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, do, do you have further question or is it okay? Uh, not a comment. Okay. Thank you. So um, I do not see any other hand raised, uh, but I have a written question from Michael. Uh, what is Wiley doing with respect to knowledge and training? Oh, interesting. Um, well, I guess um, at the moment oh. what, what Wiley is doing... Oh. So, sorry, Fiona, I think Michael now raised his hand. He wants to ask the question oh. himself. <laughs> sorry to interrupt you. Uh, Michael, please go ahead and report the question. Yeah, well, I was wondering whether uh, the <laughs> science Yeah, hi. Uh, whether science publishers have uh, uh, something, what they're doing about uh, knowledge training. So mm -hmm. um, this is mm -hmm. in particular with respect to journals and editors, chief editors. Um, are they yeah, pointing authors mm -hmm. to the possibility of using repositories, data centers to uh, store um, science article related data? Um, is that something that uh, is done systematically on the site, in particular now here, because you're from Wiley, uh, if, uh, is Wiley doing that uh, systematically? And um, if, um, do you have communication on that with chief editors, editors? <laughs> hmm. Okay. Um. Well, I guess this is, there's several sort of bits to that. Um, to my knowledge, it's it's not happening um, systematically. Um, certainly not not at Wiley. I don't think anywhere else. Um, however, you know, there is a growing movement within publishers generally to to support and sometimes to to take on um, you know training sessions for either editors or um, new authors, and that can be around um, writing or refereeing. Um, or I think it will increasingly um, start picking up um, data management and, and policies as well. Um, so I think I think yeah, it it is it's something at the moment. It's it's um, happening reactively rather than proactively. So I am increasingly getting queries internally from colleagues who have been asked by editors or by journals or by societies. Um, you know what we think and what we can offer. So I think there's a growing awareness um, in in other communities, um, you know, in you know, sociologists or mathematicians or whatever. Um, but it's something that they need to be engaging with to to support their communities. 
Um, mm -hmm. But I, I would like there to be, you know, more more training going on. So, um, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Any further questions from the audience before we close um, this webinar? This is your last chance. Okay, Fiona, I think we do not have any further questions. So um, I will thank you for um, this second webinar today. <laughs> And um, no problem. sorry, Fiona. No problem. Oh, thank you. And um, there will be um, a short satisfaction survey um, at the end of um, this this webinar, and you will be re redirected to a web page. Um, please, we give us your feedback on on the webinar. It will help us improve for. The next, um, the, the next WDS webinar. There will be also a reminder by email in case um, you don't have time to do it right away uh, at the end of this um, webinar. Thank you very much for your participation. Thank you very much, Fiona. And Thank you. goodbye, everyone.